Hello everybody, welcome to Morning Star Studios. This is Joe and we will be playing Brad the Game. Uh, you may have seen earlier that I played Brad the Game in a little competition with John and some others that have played this for the first time and I was so impressed with it that I decided I had to go with this myself, um, like independently. And so here we go, playing Brad the Game. Um, if you want to play this, it's at bradthegame.com. So let's begin. I wake up feeling a little dazed. It's another cold morning in the basement. The harsh sunlight of the early morning makes me squint as I lie there, pantless. Um, guess I'm a little tired. I'll go back to sleep. Sleep comes naturally, but just as you drift into dream, you hear a knock at the basement door. Brad! Hey, Brad, are you down there? Wow, that's Katie's voice. Quick! Get the pants on! Good thinking. You scrounge around the basement, groping haplessly among the dimly lit piles of refuse. Better hurry, though. You hear footsteps coming down the stairs. You come across a particularly gnarly pile of refuse. Um. <laughs> shit a brick. Um, no. I shall, uh, I guess, reach inside blindly. Um. Scary. You reach inside the gnarly pile of refuse, hoping for pants. But will you pull out his, a human hand? Uh. <laughs> hey! Sharks the gnarly refuse pile. Give that back! Uh, I will follow that scary piece of refuse pile, so I will give it back. Pronto. You know better than to defy a gnarly pile of refuse. I'm sorry, I say. Here's your hand back. You, I place the human hand near the pile, and it sucks it back inside. I make a mental note of where that particular pile is. Goodness! Katie's still coming down the basement stairs! Um, there's nothing left to do now except to shit a brick, I guess. <laughs> I successfully produce a piece of feces roughly the size and shape of a brick. Katie's on the last few steps now, and there's still no pants. Um, I guess I'll face her without pants. I don't see where there's anywhere else to run to. And I, I'm definitely not going to draw makeshift pants on me using that brick. Um, Katie reaches the basement or the the basement as the case may be and there you stand before her pantless and a brick shape sh in my hand come on man Ugh. hi brad says katie uh hi hey uh sandy called and wants you to go over to her place okay i say thanks katie by the way is that a brick shaped shit in your hand uh yeah why no reason just asking and she goes back upstairs well crisis averted um what did she say here? Uh, Sandy called. I'll go to Sandy's, see what she wants. Um, I walk a few streets over to Sandy's house. Along the way, I get strange looks. I think it's because of Rico Suave, but it's really because of the lack of pants that I have. Um, no, this is exactly where I was when I was with John, um, in line with the house. Um, instead of waiting in line like I did there and being polite, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to barge into the place. So I push past Merv and open the door to Sandy's house. Hey, he shouts, I'm next, no fair! I close the door on his stupid face, and then I see them. There, lying on, right on the floor of the living room, Milton and Sandy, playing Connect Four. Dun, dun, dun! Brad, says Sandy, surprised. Get back outside and wait your turn. But, but nothing, says Sandy. Go on, go! Sheepishly, I head back outside. What was that all about, asked Merv. I'm sorry, I tell him. I just got carried away. I'll say, says Merv. Two of, my, two of us hang around for a while longer, while Milton finally comes out. So, Merv asks Milton, what happened? Did I win? Milton says nothing, but walks right past you and heads off. I hear an evil laugh from inside. Ha ha ha! Nobody beats Sandy at Connect Four! Who's next? Merv goes inside, and you're left alone on Sandy's front step. Those darn Connect Four games can take forever. That's not why I came here. Damn. An hour passes, and then Buddy returns. Hey, Brad. Hi, Buddy. Merv in there now? Yep. Milton get his ass whooped? Naturally. So, uh, I'm off to work now, so I'm just gonna take back my place in line, okay? Damn. Forget, forget about getting to Sandy's tonight, dude. I'm just gonna head home, you tell Buddy. So, uh, good luck and stuff. Alright, says Buddy. Check you later. You walk back home and find something else to do. Um... I guess I'll just watch TV. 
I go to the living room to watch TV. Poppy, my dad, is there smoking his pipe. Bowling's on. Hey, Dad, mind if I see if Webster's on? Quiet down, will ya? Anderson's got a 7-10 split. I want to see how this turns out. Yeah, Dad, but Webster's my favorite. Can you watch bowling on the TV in your room upstairs? Poppy uses the remote to turn up the volume until it drowns out my annoying whining. So, I guess, um... Not digging in the mulch pile. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'll just put Webster on. Screw him. I've had enough of Poppy's tyrannical control over the television, which must, which mu bleh, with much the same confidence and pride you imagine the fathers of our country must have felt when they brazenly took a dump in Boston Harbor on that fateful night back in the 60s. That's not right at all. I wrestle a remote control from my father and attempt to find Webster somewhere on the TV. As I flip through the channels, Poppy walks out of the room. A moment later, I hear his footsteps walking up the front stairs. Victory is mine, you think to yourself. But you still can't seem to find Webster on any stations. Damn, I think. Maybe the TV's broken. But you're so consumed in your search that you don't hear Poppy's footsteps coming back down the stairs. But it certainly gets your attention when Poppy fires his old hunting rifle into the floor mere inches from your feet. Holy crap. Never, ever, ever, Bradford, may you take that remote away from me. Never, says Poppy. By a look at his face, I can tell he's deadly serious. Slowly, I put down the remote on the table in front of Poppy's chair. Uh, sorry, Dad. Uh, I'll go to Merv's to watch Webster. Poppy says nothing but glares at you intensely. L let me cut put the golf back on for you. Bowling! R right, right, bowling. Sorry. I flip through the station still bowling comes on. I'm pretty sure it's not the same batch he was watching before, but it doesn't seem to bother him. I exit the living room. Where will I go? That mulch pile keeps coming back up. Why? Um, I think I was supposed to go to Sandy's anyway, so I'll go there. I walk a few streets over to Sandy's house. Along the way, I get some strange looks. I think it's perhaps my... I still don't have the pants, seriously? What the... God damn it, stupid circle. Alright, I guess I'll go back to how things were. Uh, give this a second, because I go through everything. Uh, go back, watch TV, grab the remote, and let's go to Pam's room. No pants, wonderful. I pass through the dining room where Gandhi sits face down in a giant bowl of beans, eating them vacuum style. Interesting. Poppy's in the living room still watching bowling on TV. I will talk to Gandhi, the vacuum cleaner. Nobody interrupts Gandhi when he's... I, I don't know the... Oh, I must have... I died? I guess you really don't mess with Gandhi when he's eating. Uh, wonderful. My score is 12. I managed to be worse than I was the first time. Wonderful! Uh, great. So, um, that has been my second run-through of Brad the Game. Um... Again, like I said earlier, this is a very wacky game. This is very fun for me. I enjoy this a lot. And um, like I said before, it is at bradthegame.com. Link will be in the description. And um, this has been Joe with a Let's Play at Morningstar Studios. See ya.